and we think, man, this sounds so good when it's in here. And the challenge that we have before all of us right now is transitioning what sounds so good in here to making it really great when we, uh, when we get out there. So would you agree that what used to be possible, what used to be achievable with a lot less knowledge, skills, sophistication, certainly with a lot less technology, that what used to be possible in the past is at least more difficult, if not impossible today? Would you, would you agree with that? Is it, is it really more difficult or is that just some clever story that a dorky keynote uses at the end of the day? It really is different. It really, really is different. It's harder to connect, it's harder to motivate, it's harder to commit, and it's harder to keep up. One of the, one of the big headlines of our conversation today is not that, that people lack commitment. Everybody's committed to something, right? We're all committed. It's just to what? And is it, is, it, is it unifying, is it empowering and energizing us, or is it distracting us? When we commit, we've got energy, we're engaged. It's the life blood when we're committed. So over commitment, stated like, oh, I'm over committed. They're over compliant. Not only is resistance not a negative thing, in building commitment, it's a necessary thing. They have to push back. We must push back. It's instinctual to push back and have resistance because we need more information. Finally, we get the body involved. We have to put this stuff, this commitment into practice because after all, practice makes perfect and that's dead wrong. Practice makes permanent. Who did not attend any stuff that I did down the hall? First of all, shame on you, but. They suck the life out of us. That's an energy eroder, right? We just feel spent, empty, exhausted when we get done with their meetings, their phone calls, their projects. You got it? Enhancers, eroders. Are you thinking about who's energizing you and who's eroding you right now? You should be. <laughs> when you walk out of here, you should have a better sense of clarity as to why and how your best relationships are working. It's not an accident. There are some things that are happening naturally in your very best relationships that are the key components or ingredients to healthy, productive, and energized relationships and it's important that you know what they are. It's not just about you executing anymore. It's not just about our own personal production or our own ability to get results. Here's the caveat. It's about our ability to get results with and through others. So many times we have dangerous, dysfunctional, uh, just painful relationships and we think we can change them. We think the other person wants it changed. And the fact of the matter is, sometimes they don't want it changed, and sometimes we're kidding ourselves that we even have the influence to drive any change. There should be some drama in meetings. It's very energizing. People will show up precisely because there is conflict and drama. Is this where the closing keynote speaker starts talking about positive thinking our way out of project turmoil? <laughs> when things go tough, is Hagley going to say, go to your happy place? <laughs> I want to change your expectations. You are energizing people one way or another right now. You're either making them more frustrated, more committed, more enthusiastic, or more unclear. You are energizing them. And some of you, I don't know who you are, you're not energizing people at all. You're sucking the life out of a relationship. <laughs> Sometimes we do things that we can't explain. Sometimes others do things that they can't explain. And we can choose to energize that in a totally unproductive way if we focus attention on it. Or we can choose to let it go. So enhancers are gonna enhance us. They're gonna elevate, escalate, amplify the energy in a situation either positively or negatively, okay? You got that? Here's the headline. There is positive, pure, genuine, real energy, right? I mean, it's just raw right there. People feel good, they're enthusiastic, they're excited. And then there's pure, genuine, real frustration. Not positive energy, right? But it's real, man, and it's there. Flip side, there's fake, fabricated, manufactured energy. People telling us what they think we want to hear. Putting on a happy face. We can't do anything when people fake us and we fake others. If you want to uh, make a little teeny tiny small problem into a great big problem, just keep talking about it. Just uh, keep allowing other people to talk about it and you get a resounding, yeah. 
Right? Yeah doesn't mean yeah. Because even though their words said yes, everything else said no. And when words and actions are in opposition, believe the action. Nonverbals speak louder than verbal. The life blood of relationships, communication. It improves. It improves in quality, tone, frequency. It all goes in the right direction when there's the right kind of energy. When we communicate with message and meaning, okay, rather than just communicating with data, when we communicate with message and meaning, as, as is happening right now, 7% of the overall message that I'm sending is represented by the words that I'm choosing, okay? Which is the same as sending an email, right? Purely text. So what, you say? What does that mean, Hagley? That means that if you're sending an email that has message and meaning, 93% of what you intend to get across the recipient ain't making it. How's that grab you? Most of the best, worst, loudest fights that I've had in the last five or 10 years all started on email. Tap, 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 capital, 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 capital. <laughs> Send. Right? And then they get it. What does that mean? They just put capital lock. Tap, 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 tap. <laughs> right? In an email, do the three words, I'm not mad, mean, I'm not mad? Or do they mean, I'm not mad? <laughs> Which is it, right? What are you doing on a day in, day out basis? to make sure that you and others around you are absolutely crystal clear on what you're doing. Crystal clear on the expectations. Crystal clear even on the consequences if expectations are met. What are you doing? Any questions or comments yet? You wanna leave? Not yet? You do wanna leave? Oh, you're asking a question. <laughs> I'm a people person. Any people people in the room? Don't raise your hand on that. Oh, I just love people. You know, I love being around people, love talking to people, 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 just love them. <laughs> and it strikes me that being a people person is being the kind of person where others seek you out. They value your advice, your perspective, your influence, and innovation, and motivation, and they don't feel better about you when they walk out. If you're a good people person, after they're done with you, they feel better about who? Themselves. And it seems to me that if we're really a good people person, we don't go around saying, I'm a good people person. Other people say it for us. Boss, peer, project team member, spouse, kid, parent, if those critical relationships are not so hot, doesn't matter what's going on in the world, we're not so hot. They need to be understood. They need to be challenged. They need to be recognized. They need to have fun. They need to achieve. All of those unique needs that all of us have are met primarily through relationships, not incentive plans. I am giving you all the information that I am able to give you right now and still keep my job and still do my duty. But you don't believe me. Let's talk about that. Seems to me that as people, the first thing that we turn on when things get tough is people rather than attacking the problems. Because when we get emotional, right, we start speaking from the gut, which doesn't always get processed by the brain. So we have to put it down in front of us so that we have visual contact with the heart of the issue. Execution is essential, and it's essential because it, it, it demands clarity. It's not just the what, but it's the how. It demands courage, and courage has to do with having the guts, which is just raw, and having the confidence to say, hey, I can or we can do this. Execution takes action. We can't just sit in a boardroom, a conference room, bounce emails back and forth about what we're going to do. We have to, have to actually do it. It takes a decision. And I hope you never forget this word. It's about eliminating the alternative, as we talked about earlier. And finally, it takes risk. You've got to be, excuse me, vulnerable, right? You've got to take a risk. And it's in that risking, in that failing, if I may be so bold, that we learn. To make it into the Baseball Hall of Fame, you typically have to have a batting average of 300 at least, which means that out of every 10 at-bats, you got on base three times and failed to get on base seven. That's to get into the Hall of Fame. The best guys fail more than twice as often as they succeed. I think that applies to life.